Joshua Bell, the chap you see, a maestro of the violin, decided to play a little trick on the unsuspecting public. A harmless prank, really. He wanted to test a theory to see if people could recognize beauty in an unexpected place. He donned a rather ordinary disguise, grabbed his Stradivarius worth a king's ransom, and took his talents to the subway. Imagine a world-class musician blending into the daily grind of commuters. A concert hall, it was not. The acoustics were far from perfect, the ambience anything but serene. The year was 2007, a time when people were perhaps even more rushed than they are today. The Washington Post, bless their cotton socks, were in on it. They orchestrated this social experiment to see if anyone would pause, even for a moment. They wanted to see if folks rushing about their day would stop and appreciate a bit of beauty, a touch of the divine, in such an unexpected setting. Would anyone recognize the genius in their midst, a noble pursuit, wouldn't you say, to remind us all that sometimes beauty is right in front of us, even in the most mundane places? Well, dear viewer, the results were, shall we say, underwhelming. The masses hurried past, their faces buried in newspapers, or more likely these days, glowing rectangles. A symphony of indifference played out to the tune of screeching trains and the aroma of stale coffee. Oh, a few souls, bless their hearts, did pause for a moment as if noticing a particularly persistent pigeon. But the relentless tide of humanity swept them away, back to their emails and their deadlines. A penny for their thoughts, I'd wager, wouldn't have bought a decent cuppa. The Greeks, brilliant chaps, had a word for it, kairos. The opportune moment, the right time and the right place. Seems even genius needs a bit of stage management, wouldn't you say? Our friend Joshua, tucked away in the bowels of the earth, was a tad off brand, you see. A Stradivarius amidst the screech of trains. Mozart drowned out by the morning commute. It's enough to make Socrates weep into his hemlock. In 2007, Joshua Bell, a world-renowned violinist, decided to ditch his fancy concert halls and play for the true art connoisseurs, rushed, sleep-deprived subway commuters. Spoiler alert, it went about as well as you'd expect. This highbrow social experiment, courtesy of the Washington Post, was designed to see if anyone would recognize genius when it wasn't gift-wrapped in a tuxedo and high ticket prices. So Bell played for 43 minutes in the Washington DC subway, wielding his $3.5 million Stradivarius like a true street performer. Six classical masterpieces, thousands of people, and a grand total of $32.17 in donations. Yes, $32.17. Clearly the subway is where cultured tastes go to die. Ever heard of Kairos? It's Aristotle's fancy word for timing. Apparently playing back in a subway station at rush hour is the wrong timing. Who knew? Context is everything. And Bell's virtuosity was as out of place as a Shakespearean monologue at a monster truck rally. Jesus once said, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. Turns out the same applies to violinists in some ways. Even the Son of God gets it. Familiarity breeds contempt, or in this case, total indifference. We fail to see the extraordinary in the ordinary, the sublime in the mundane. A bit like mistaking a Van Gogh for a child's duty. Tragic, really. The Emperor's new sonata, social proof as the arbiter of taste. We are, after all, social creatures, aren't we? We look to others, the herd mentality, to validate our own tastes. No applause, no encores, no standing ovation. Must be background music then, eh? The poor chap was missing his velvet-lined case, his crisply printed program, his hushed concert hall, the trappings of success, the signifiers of significance. We are a simple lot, easily swayed by a fancy label or a hefty price tag. Six, a single swallow, the little girl and the maestro. Ah, but there's hope yet. A single swallow, as they say, does not a summer make. But in this concrete jungle, it was a beacon of hope. A little girl, bless her heart, stopped, listened, lost herself in the music. Perhaps innocence has an ear for beauty that experience dulls. Or maybe, just maybe, she heard the music, not the subway, the soul of the artist, not the price tag of his instrument. One can hope, can't one? Eight, an ode to mindfulness, finding beauty in unexpected places. So, dear viewer, the next time you find yourself rushing through life, eyes glued to a screen, earbuds drowning out the world, I urge you, stop, look around, listen. 
You never know when you might encounter a Joshua Bell playing his heart out in a subway. Perhaps, just perhaps, if you open your mind and your ears, you'll find beauty in the most unexpected of places. Think of it as an investment, dear viewer. It's free after all, and far more rewarding than staring at another cat video. Take a moment to breathe to absorb the world around you. Notice the small details, the laughter of a child, the rustling of leaves, the distant hum of a city alive with stories. These moments, often overlooked, are the threads that weave the rich tapestry of our lives. Embrace them, cherish them, and let them remind you that beauty is not confined to grand gestures or famous landmarks. It is in the everyday, the mundane, the ordinary, and it is waiting for you to discover it.